Hey guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, I wanted to share my first steps in Elden Ring. I've played before, but to be honest, not seriously. I have less than 30 hours played and barely knew what I was doing. So I was sitting the other day thinking, I really wanted to actually play this game. So I messaged a few people on my list and I asked what I should do to get started. So they all told me that a Bleed Build Samurai would be great for me to play in my first playthrough, but it would also take some preparation. So I got a list of things I needed to do, and loaded up the resource map for Elden Ring, and set out to build my newbie Bleed Samurai. So I thought you might like to join me on this journey, and see exactly what I did to set this up. So we will begin with selecting my character. My ultimate goal for this build won't be achieved in this video, but either way it will make me strong enough to go through the game in a much more enjoyable way as I progress. Now, the reason I pointed this out is because there are two main options here either the samurai or the bandit to achieve what I plan to do. Although I am going to go with the samurai, the reason here is that he comes with much cooler armor to start, as well as a katana. This class will be the only one that can run dual wielding katanas early game. So I selected my class, created my character, and loaded in and died to the first boss to get started. And now I am loaded into the main game. I have included a map as we go in case you get lost. So the first thing I did was talk to the guy found right here when you first enter the world. This will become important later. I was also told not to kill him, so this time I didn't. Oh yeah. Come to the Of course. You Unfortunately, without gun you are fake. Then I headed to the church of Ella to get the sight of grace. After that, I went to the Gatefront Site of Grace. Here is where I rested to get my ability to summon my mount. The Finger Maidens. They serve at you. I can play turning to aid you. And you need own to the foot. Then it's settled. Summon me. Ah, I bequeath. While here, I also grabbed the map fragment, and then went down into this little tunnel here and grabbed the whetstone so I can use my affinities. After that, I ran over to this site of grace. then traveled back to the Church of Ella. After you have the whetstone, an NPC will be here to offer you the Spirit Calling Bell and the Lone Wolf Ashes. And I really wanted those, so that's why I came back here to get them. Ah, as I was in Shrike Torrance. Now, I took a moment to equip them so I would have them ready when I needed. Next, I headed to the Murkwater Cave to get to the entrance right up to here and jump down. The up air here will allow you to fall safely without taking any damage. Then run down to the cave. When here you will get invaded by Bloody Finger. This guy can be tough, but if you're having trouble like I did at first, simply avoid him for a few seconds and a guardian will spawn in to assist you. Once he is dead, you will then receive a very nice dagger and get an entrance to the cave. The cave is very short and you don't have to really kill anything. Just run to the end where you will find patches. When you first enter this room, nothing is here. But you will find a chest and upon looting it, he spawns in. Then you fight him. This is pretty easy using parry. He isn't very difficult. 
Here you have two options though, you can either kill him or at around 50% he will surrender and then offer to sell you things, but if you kill him, he will just drop the patches bell bearing. This is what I usually do. You then take that to the table of the Lost Grace and turn it into the Twin Maiden Husks and you'll now be able to purchase Missionary Cookbook Volume 2. This will allow you to craft the Golden Pickled Fowl's Foot. Then, once you have that, head over to the Stormhill Shack. Here you will find a girl in a red dress. Talk to her three times and she will give you the Jellyfish Summon. After you have the jellyfish, just head down the road a little bit and run around and up this cliff above the tunnel here. And quickly grab this in the middle of the jellyfish here, giving you the Godric Soldier Summon. This is a really great summon for later on. Now, head to the Death Touch Catacombs. In here you again don't have to fight anything, just run past everything until you reach the point and grab the second katana. Then once you're done here, run out and run up around to the cliff above the catacombs and kill the rider to receive the golden vow of war. Once you have this, now travel up here to the third church of America and grab all the stuff you'll need for your flasks. Then head out and jump up here just north of the church and kill the teardrop scarab for your sacred blade ashes of war. This will come in very handy later as you will see. Then jump down here and use the way gate. From here you will be riding south to Fort Faroth, grabbing all of the Sites of Grace and the map fragment on the way. It just makes it easier to figure out where you're going. When you have reached Fort Faroth, rest at the Point of Grace and you will be taken to your round table. Then you can return and continue. Then, once you get to Fort Faroth, run in and take the ladder avoiding the enemies, open the chest at the top to receive the first half of the Dectus Medallion. Then jump down and run through avoiding the enemies and grab the Radagon Sword Seal and exit the fort. Next, head to the Smoldering Church. Here, grab the recipe book which will unlock the Silver Foulfoot recipe, another very important recipe to have as you move forward. Once you have this, head down here to the North Fort site of Grace and look for the Invisible Scarab. You'll be able to find him by watching the shiny footprints on the ground. Once you kill this Scarab, you will receive one of the best early ashes, Flame of Red Mains. This is so overpowered when you're in your early game, it is totally worth the trip. Next, ride up to the Fort of Gale. Here you just have to run in behind and grab, Flame grant me strength and run out. You will likely die here, but that's fine, you still get the unlock.
Now, return to the Third Church of America and ride all the way south till you reach Fort Height. Here you will enter the fort, then kite the knight up the ladder. When his head pops just above the ladder and he reaches the top, summon your wolves and kill him for your ashes of bloody slash. This is a key one for the build I am planning to use through the game. Then of course loot the chest for the second half of the Dectus and Medallion, granting you now access to the lift. Now, head all the way down south here and grab the Morning Star. Then, head along the coast and grab the Faith Knot Crystal Tear. Now is when I took a break from my progression to farm. I know, right, farming is boring, but it will make everything moving forward so much easier. So first I rode around everywhere collecting Sights of Grace. The reason I did this was I needed the Sights of Grace, but also I was collecting raw fruit. We will need a ton of these and they grow just about everywhere. Next I headed to the Groveside Cave. Here I simply ran in past the wolves and grabbed the silver fireflies from the water, then let the wolves kill me. Then I respawn and repeat till I have a decent amount of these flies. Then I headed to the coastal areas. I went to a few different ones and killed the birds with my bow and gathered the fowl's feet. This took the longest, but I wanted to stock up to save me from having to do it later. Then finally, I returned to the Third Church of America and rode down here and gathered golden fireflies. Just avoid the bears and you'll be fine. Then I crafted a bunch of silver and gold pickles foul feet and set back off onto my journey. Our next stop will be the Church of Pilgrimage. Here is where I was using my silver pickled foul's feet, which of course increase your chance of item discovery. So once here, just use one and equip your sacred blade Ash of War on your blade. Here we will be farming this large skeleton just right here beside the side of Grace for the bandit's curved sword. The sacred blade is nice here because it insta-kills him stopping his reanimation crap and making this a ton faster. This will take some time and it's RNG dependent, but you will eventually farm the two bandit swords you will need. After you have them, then head south to the Tombsward Catacombs. Here you will be making your way through to kill the final boss to unlock the spirit summon of the Headless. This is an amazing summon to have early, so it will be worth it. Have Sacred Blade equipped and you won't have too much trouble here. Next, you're going to want to travel and make your way up here, way up here to this site of grace, Boil Prawn Shack. After you have this, ride over to this little island and grab the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear. After you have that, ride up to the Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. This place can be super annoying, at least it was for me, but it will pay off in the end. For this, equip the mace with the flames and head through to the end boss and kill him to unlock the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell 1. This will then allow you to purchase Smithing Stones 1 and 2 from the Twin Husks in an unlimited way. After you have this, head to the lift and take it. Now you're in the Altus Plateau. From here, head over to this area, being very careful not to aggro the annoying crabs and kill this tear scarab for the Bloodblade Ash of War. This one can't be skipped because it is key to our bleeds early on.
After you have this, head all the way over here to the sealed tunnel. Break the invisible wall, jump down and loot the chest. This will give you the smithing stone bell bearing too, which of course then allows you unlimited access to buying smithing stones 3 and 4. Well here though, try to farm these miners because they drop smithing stone 5s. You can reset this and continue to farm them as long as you want, and you should try to farm 24 stones from them. Now to farm some runes. So let's head back to Fourth Faroth and equip our mace, or the swords with the bleed ashes on them. Then we head over to the giant dragon and bleed it to death. But be sure, just before it dies, to use one of your golden crafted pickled fowl's feet for the extra runes. Once dead, you will be awarded a ton of runes. Use these to level. Now for our final step. For this we will want to complete the quest line offered to us by the NPC we first met when we created our character. It is a very simple quest chain involving some invasions and stuff, but it's too long to include here. But there are a ton of guides on it so I'm sure you can find one if you need one. Once you're finished it, use the Pure Blood Knight Metal. Once used it will teleport you to a new area called Mogwin Palace. This is a very dangerous endgame area, so be sure to run up here and grab the Point of Grace before doing anything. Because if you die and leave like I did the first time and forget to get this point of grace, you won't be able to get back here and it'll be problematic to return. Now to the point of being here. After you ride around here hugging the wall, you will be invaded. And if you kill these invaders three times, you will get an unlock we want, the white mask. Now you have two choices here. You can if you're a skilled player, simply kill them and you're done. But me, always looking for cheese, well I was a little too weak still at this point and not a very skilled player. So I chose option two. What I did was wait for my invasion. Then ran to this edge, and when he lunged at me, I simply headed off the ledge and died. But, of course, he followed and the game counted it as a kill. So I did this three times and got the mask unlock. Once finished, I then headed up to this ledge, equipped my bow, and shot these creatures and they ran off the edge, giving me a ton of runes. Rinse and repeat. Now that I was loaded with runes, I headed back to the twins and purchased 24 of each smithing stone, and upgraded my swords to level 15, and that was that. I am now ready to set out on my journey to play through the story of this game. Well guys, I do hope you enjoyed my preparation video, and I know I probably missed a thousand things I could have gotten to make myself even more powerful, but I'm still pretty new to the game, and I tried to avoid guides as much as possible. The tools I focused on using were messages from friends, wiki on bleed builds, and of course my resource map, which you will all know I love for any game. Anyway guys, if you would like me to continue this series part time, as I now go through my story and discover things, please let me know in the comments. And as always guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.